Welcome back to 60 Minutes. Vanessa Conlon and her best friend Jessica Small were only 15 when they were abducted from the main street of Bathurst and driven out of town. Vanessa would escape. Jessica's never been seen since. And no one has ever been brought to justice. But all that may be about to change, thanks to crucial new evidence and a witness who saw it all happen. The next minute, Vanessa came in my back kitchen door and just flung at me, flung her arms around my neck and just wailed, which I just... I could tell by her cry something was really wrong. Really wrong. <laughs> Sorry. On the outskirts of Bathurst, Ricky Small's daughter, Jessica, is fighting for her life. It was like a fear, sort of, like when she come past, scream, and you could hear the scream and come, and the fear in, the, in someone. Rob Fitzpatrick lived on the edge of town. In the early hours of Sunday morning, He'd just returned home from his cousin's wedding. When the car come past, I seen the white car, but the figure of a man driving, but a hand coming over from the, the driver's right hand shoulder, hanging out the window. It was like she was fighting or something or hitting him or something like that like a panic trying to get out of a window. It's my best way, try, like trying to get, get out of the window itself. I thought it was a domestic or something like that. Two people arguing and fighting. You know better than to jump into domestics than that. Rob crept along his fence line out of sight and got to within 15 or 20 metres of the car. It was a white Holden Commodore. So Did you still hear the screams at this point? No, the scream had stopped. I watched him get out of the car and walk around to his boot and get something out of his boot. He's kneeling on the seat and reached over the back and he was doing something in the seat. And as I'm watching, he just drove off casually. He weren't even on the parked off the road. He just drove up straight, straight up the hill. And what's beyond that? Darkness. There's not much out there. If anyone, you could scream as much as you want, no one will hear you out there. You could say we're the last road out of town. When Rob heard that Jessica Small was missing, he went straight to the police. But incredibly, they weren't interested in what he had seen. He persisted and went back the following day. And this time, they reluctantly took his statement. Just one paragraph. But the whole time, I got the feeling like he didn't want to take the statement. Like, uh, he's already made up his mind what was going on. Do you think they didn't care because Jessica was known to them? She was a girl from the wrong side of the tracks? Yes, I'd say that. If she, my feeling is if she was... Her family was sort of more important in the town, it would have been a whole different investigation. You know, that, that they were crucial moments, those first, that first day or two, to me. We have to get to her. We have to find her. Please help me. We've got to find her. And you don't know where to look, where to go. And I'm just praying. I guess at that point, 
that I had some smart policemen on the job because I had nothing else. Did you think in those first few days that she was alive? I think I tried to imagine that she would be strong enough to get away from a situation but obviously she wasn't. Eight months after Jessica vanished, two forestry workers stumbled across a set of girls' underwear, a bottle of bleach and a blanket covered in blood. They'd been dumped in bushland about 75 kilometres east of Bathurst. This isolated forest possibly held the most important clue to identifying Jessica's killer. So something pretty horrific had happened. It looked like it or something very suspicious. Mm. That's the first thing that crossed our mind. No one knows this forest better than Glenn Christie Johnston. He's been working here for 30 years. Automatically the first thought was of Jessica because it was around that time. Was that spot easily visible to anyone passing by? No, no, it was in an isolated uh, area. That road had, had been down a track that nobody usually used. So it was fairly isolated. So do you think whoever hid those items must have had some knowledge of the forest? Yes, they should have, or, or knowledge of how the forest worked anyway. True to form, Bathurst police all but dismissed Glenn too. They didn't even bother to take his statement. And that potential evidence he found wasn't DNA tested. And what's even more shocking, it was later destroyed by the local police. All the while, Jessica's mother, Ricky Small, is told nothing. The fact that it was the following year just blows me away. I would have been I would have been in that forest scratching the dirt looking for her physically. Do you feel let down by the police? Very. I'm disgusted. And I'm hurt and I'm angry. and the treatment by police. Bathurst police, like the, the local detectives that were on the case, was just, was just wrong, it was abominable. Coming up, the case goes cold. Until one dogged detective... It's just so obvious. She's telling the truth. Zeroes in. Did you kill Jessica Small?